Hey, welcome back to Rooster Teeth at E3, presented by Jason Bourne. Speaking of people who have seen things, people who know things, we are back with <laughs> Matt Kishimoto, uh, who's the senior product manager on Final Fantasy 15. Dude, th we've been waiting a long time for this game. I'm so <laughs> excited. I, I, I met Matt uh, recently at the at the Final Fantasy 15 event. Uh, was it last month or the month before? Yeah, the one that, March the one 30th. The kind of funny yeah. hosted. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah, it was it was amazing to see. You know, after so little information for so long, just to finally have like the covers thrown off and just have like this wealth of information thrown at us and. You know, one, after the event, we realized, oh, you all have been really busy. <laughs> I mean, like, you, you, you look at not, not only the game, but you got, you know, an anime with Brotherhood. You yeah. got a movie with Kingsglaive coming out. Yeah. Like, how, you know, how relieved are you now to be able to actually talk about these things that you've probably been working on for a long time? Yeah, it's... Um it's, it's, it's crazy how many kind of different multimedia projects there are. And it is a relief to finally be able to say them out loud. <laughs> We were like talking in code for so many, so many months. What, what was your like? What were your code words? You'd be like, "You're working on, uh, you working on Excalibur." Excalibur, <laughs> yeah. Like I can't reveal our project names because uh, then oh. once we say it, then everybody knows, and then we can't speak in our secret lingo. Uh, I, but I, no. I, I love secret project I'm, I'm names because you got to come up with a really cool sounding. I'm, I'm gonna call it Excalibur. I like Excalibur. <laughs> so uh, the code Excalibur name for the is game, coming out soon. The code name for the game is actually Black. Black. Oh. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. there we go. A little bit of insider information. You're not going to find that in any other <laughs> inter in E3 interview. No, but I'm glad you guys really enjoyed the event. I mean, we, we wanted to make it different than a traditional press conference of just kind of like every developer going up on stage and presenting something, and that's really where those guys kind of fit in well, both, both Tim and Greg, and so... Yeah, we're glad you guys liked it too. So, you I mean, you know, with all of this media, like you mentioned, you know, uh, the anime, the movie, the game, like... You know, how is it trying to maintain that balance? Like, if someone just wants to play the game, like, how do you maintain that balance yeah. where they can still understand, you know, everything without the need for the supplementary stuff, or yeah, to like yeah. try to entice them to go watch the supplementary stuff? Yeah, I think that's the the beauty of how each of these projects were created. They're created independently, but if you experience all of them um, together, it's just a more enriching experience, and that's the exciting part. So, like, the game, you can play it on its own. And you can fully enjoy it. If you watch Kingsglaive the movie, it gives you more insight. Wait, do you guys know the story of Kingsglaive or where it takes place? All I know is what I saw at the Uncovered uh, Got it. event. So the cool thing is, let me break it down for you a little okay. bit. Um, so a lot of people think it's a prequel or a sequel or a spinoff. But what's happening in Kingsglaive is Final Fantasy XV game is the adventure of Noctis and his three friends as they set out on the road trip right. from the homeland of Lucis. Kingsglaive is all the events that are happening back at Lucis. Okay, so, so while they're concurrent. on the road. Okay. It's concurrent, so it's a parallel story. So it basically just enriches more of the Final Fantasy XV uh, universe. But, by the way, can I just say, because um, we, we've we got some of the, the gameplay going now, and um, one of the things I appreciate most about this game is the sheer accuracy of what it's like to go on a road trip <laughs> with your buddies. <laughs> Every... <laughs> Every painstaking aspect. <laughs> did, did, did you guys go on a road trip and break down to make sure you really got the realism? I personally did not with the team, but I know the development team has gone on road trips, four in a car together, really experiencing that. And I think uh, that really resonates with a lot of people. Uh, you know, the idea of just hanging out with your friends and, you know, going on an adventure. I mean, most people don't go on as grand of an adventure when they go on a road trip, but we can, yeah. you know, it, it's relatable and yeah. it's something that people uh, can identify with. The monsters we usually fight are a little smaller. <laughs> so In real life? Yeah. Yeah, just a little bit. We gotta level up a little bit. When um, you know when you all uh, unveiled the um, the cover of Stand by Me by Florence and the Machine, yeah, you know even before you said it was Florence and Machine and the Machine, uh, there was a, a couple of girls sitting behind me at the event. We we're like, that's Florence and the Machine. Really? That's Florence and the Machine. Yeah, they, they called cool. it, and then Greg Miller came out and was like, you know, nobody guessed it. That's Florence and the Machine. The, but the, the girls two were girls, like, yeah. like, they they called it. They <laughs> absolutely cool. knew. But it, it's it's cool to see you know all of the different. Um, aspects that are being worked on in the game, the promotion, like that, I thought that was a huge get, you know, it was an awesome cover, yeah. uh, you know, beautiful, really ties into the, to what we've seen so far of the game, no, really ties in well. No, you guys, it's crazy, like, I mean, we didn't talk before this, but no, no, no. like all of these themes that you guys are hitting on are exactly what the dev team wanted to, to make sure that everybody got, so the road trip or traveling with your friends is something very relatable and, and something that everybody can experience, Yeah. just like you're saying, maybe not to this level, but something everyone can experience. And Stand By Me, everybody knows the song. Yeah, absolutely. Stand By Me. And so really that's why uh, the team wanted to, to use that song. And it's so fitting, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, it's I mean, perfect. How yeah. do you, you know, you know, in dealing with like the theme of the road trip, right, going from, you know, all these different points, like how 
do you draw people off the road? Like I assume like for side quests and stuff. Like yeah. how do you you know do get them? Like we're looking at the at gameplay right now. How do you get them out of the car and then out you know here to explore? Uh, it's just pretty quick button prompts. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's not like anything laborious, but I mean in the car you can either go fast travel mode or you can manually drive it yourself. Now, um, we've got a, a question. This is an observation um, from someone on Twitter. It's L. Roosevelt 14 says, oh, is that why the main character wears black? So was oh, the code name based black? on the main character? Oh, it's not. Uh, that's just, that's just actually go, pretty just funny. Just say yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah, that absolutely <laughs> is the case. The reason they wear we black. We that here. Uh, it's actually, there is a deeper meaning behind that. Um, that's actually the royal color of Lucis. Okay. So that's why all okay. the characters, because they're from that, that area. So in a weird way, the answer is yes. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just very roundabout. roundabout. Tell them yes. Yeah. So, uh, you know, in the game, are we going to get to control any other characters besides Noctis? You know? Um, no, it's a great question. Uh, you don't. Uh, specifically, you don't get to switch party, party members like traditional Final Fantasy. Um, but the way kind of the, um, the team-up attacks work and the buddy system works is um, basically if you're on PS4, it's L1, and then use the D-pad mm -hmm. to call them in and to use different abilities. And it almost feels like you're working with them mm -hmm. um, to use that. And, of course, on Xbox One, it's uh, left bumper, left bumper yeah. and then, and then D-pad, yeah. Sure. So, I mean, you know, Final Fantasy is one of those series that, you know, people are super passionate about. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a storied franchise. You know, it's, it's in rare company you know, to think about, like, games that have been going on for as long as this. You know, what is it, uh, you know, what are the things, what are the changes that you think that long-term fans of the series will love in this game? You know, what's new that people are going to really latch on to? Yeah. I mean, for, for long-time hardcore Final Fantasy fans, like myself, like you guys, there's all those great kind of... Um, like all the callbacks? All the callbacks of, of, of huge weapons, big monsters, um, of uh, characters that will make appearances like... Like, Sid, like the Sids. Sids in here, a granddaughter Cindy, um, <laughs> Cactar's in here. Yes. I don't know if you guys saw our latest trailer, but we had uh, Mulboro makes an appearance. Do, um, we, do we have a Bahamut? We have not confirmed nor denied anything about Bahamut. <laughs> <laughs> behemoth, yes. I was like, Bahamut, Behemoth. Yeah, right. Uh, the summons or the astrals. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are kind of traditional Final Fantasy lore. So Ramu, we've announced. Um, Leviathan. Um, Titan. I'm trying to think what else. <laughs> that, that's already well, an impressive list. Yeah. We're, we're good. We can wait. We don't have long to wait. It's uh, September 30th, so it's like not that far oh, off. That's yeah? Really soon. Yeah, yeah, three and some change months, something like that. Yeah, this, so this game, um, I mean, of course, it started life as um, 13 Verses. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's gone through, like it went into a cocoon and it's coming out as this beautiful butterfly. Uh, you know, but it's been a long journey for you guys, and now it's, it's so close to launch. Yeah. Like, what are, what are your guys' plans post launch? Um, we haven't really announced our post-launch plans. Um, definitely stay tuned for that. We'll probably reveal those soon, but um, there will be some exciting things. Um, well, I, I'm looking, looking forward to it. <laughs> um, so, you know, people who's, uh, who's as bad as Luck Cat on Twitter is asking, like, how involved is the Platinum demo in the story for the full game? Oh, that's actually a really good question. So the Platinum demo falls within the Final Fantasy XV universe, and so it takes place in a dreamscape. Uh, of Noctis. Um, if you watch Brotherhood, the anime series, episode one, you'll see Noctis knocked down and kind of bleeding and unconscious. And the events from Brotherhood of when he's knocked out the comatose state is what the dream is in Platinum Demo. You know, it's, so it's all okay. intertwined. It's so funny. There was, um, this is like years and years ago, there was a game. It was called Eternal Sonata. And I'm pretty sure it was about, it was about Chopin. And it was the dream he had, like, as he lay dying. And it was that same sort of thing where oh, it all really? took place, like, within, yeah, like, his last dream. That's, um, cool. that's always a really cool thing when you, like, get to go in someone's head and see something. Um, and it does connect uh, a bunch of different, like, areas of, of your world together. Yeah. Um, and yet it can be self-contained, like some of the other things you're talking about, like the concurrent, um, the concurrent story, um, you know, of course, for the movie versus the game. So yeah. you can experience the part that you want or you can experience all of it. Yeah, and I mean, Platinum Demo, if you play it all the way through, there's, a, there's even a cutscene towards the end where Noctis is lying in bed with his father right beside him. So it all, if you watch and, and see everything that we're doing within F Final Fantasy XV, it's like 
oh man, I didn't notice that one little Easter egg or that or this. Yeah. So all those things, yeah. That's awesome. Tie back. So there's a there's a couple of I'm going to read two different questions here. Cool. They're kind of they're kind of tied to each other. Um, Cast Blue Eye on Twitter is asking, is Final Fantasy 15 an easy game to jump into if you've never played before? And Pink Portrait is asking, do you have to have played past Final Fantasy games to play this one? Those are really good questions. They're great questions. Super great questions. So the whole development philosophy behind the game is um, easy to jump in, difficult to master. So the gameplay should be pretty fast and fluid. Um, pretty easy button prompts if anybody's played it. Um, but once you get into the high level of techniques and combos, countering, pairing, then that's where it gets like really crazy. Yeah, and I think the, the important thing for people who aren't familiar with the series, the important thing for them to remember is every iteration, every story is kind of self-contained. Yeah. It's just there's thematic similarities and thematic elements that carry over between yeah. games. But you know, if you haven't played any of the games in the past, you're not missing yeah. you know, tons of backstory. Yeah. It's uh, it's just you know, you if you have played the games, you you get the references, you understand, like you get maybe a little more in jokes, and you're yeah. more familiar with uh, the theme, I guess. Yeah, no, you're 100 percent spot on. I mean, it's number 15, but you don't have to have played the first 14 to play to appreciate this one. Like you're saying, I mean, the world's different, characters are different, storylines are different, villains are different, so everything's unique. I mean. For me, my personal favorite is Final Fantasy VI. Um, and so characters like Terra and Locke and Sabin, you don't need to have known them to know what's happening in 15. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's one of the nice things about Final Fantasy is that it does get to reinvent itself. Uh, really, every iteration, you always get to play with something new. Yeah. Um, and there are those, those elements that are familiar for fans of the game, the callbacks and everything. They're nice, but um, they're not required to understand anything about a new Final Fantasy yeah. game. Yeah. And, you know, I think the, you know, one of the trademarks... I'm angling here, for a job too, by the way. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we're looking at, you know, a, a trailer right now. One of the things that always strikes me about Final Fantasy games, and it's definitely apparent, evident in this time, is uh, all the work that goes into the costume design and the yeah. character design and the way it looks. Do you all think about, like, cosplayers when you're designing these characters and about <laughs> how, you know, cosplayers could effectively, you know, emulate what they see in the game? Like, and does that uh, enter the creative process at on all? On a related note, do you ever deliberately torture cosplayers by making something that's like amazing and also impossible <laughs> um, all right let, let's go with the first <laughs> one do we take inspiration from cosplayers um, or do you just like keep them in mind like when you're making a, a character like oh we should you know make it this way that way someone can cosplay more easily yeah. as this character unfortunately I can't I can't answer that one because I'm not on the costume design team or sure, character sure. design yeah. team but um but for Final Fantasy 15 they uh, they the team partnered up with a, a clothing company called Rowan. So you guys can Google that, R-O-E-N. Um, it's a Japanese clothing company and um, who made all of the costumes in real life for sale and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Damn, I see it right here. Yeah. Oh, Gus is going to like come up with a whole new fashion. But you're going to look he's at the gonna price He's going to come point. into the next podcast, and he's going to be like, I'm cool. I'll just expense it <laughs> so, uh, for on camera. i got to get it rush delivery right now. I can wear it on during this interview. But uh, then do we torture customers? I don't think anybody <laughs> thinks about, like, oh, these asymmetrical clothing attires. But uh, So, you know, I didn't know about the partnership with Rowan, but I knew, you know, uh, you all had um, Audi yeah. do some of the work. I guess, was it the car in Kingsglaive? Or was it in Final Fantasy? Was it in Kingsglaive? It's in Kingsglaive. Yeah, uh, they, they did some design work for one of the vehicles, correct? Yeah, so we're going to make one custom uh, Audi R8 um, that's inspired um, through the universe of, of Kingsglaive. So that will be created. I don't know exactly. I don't think we've decided exactly how we're going to uh, give it out or sell it or, or whatnot, but there will be one. I'll, uh, I'll <laughs> gladly pay to have it shipped to Austin for myself. I'll, I'll drive it over for you, <laughs> and then we can all take a road trip together. See, we should do that, and then we can film it. It can be you, me, and uh, Ashley, and I'll, Joel. I'll be a dude. It's Let's fine. do it. Yeah, we can, we can take a, a road trip in an R8. <laughs> Even though it might be only a two-seater. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't, think, I don't think there's a back seat in there, so there's, we'll have to double I don't we'll think there's any up. such thing as being really comfortable on a road trip. Like, yeah. everyone's, it, whether there's a back seat or not, everyone's crammed in by the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, in, in, in thinking about the, the combat that we've seen so far, you yeah. know, with Final Fantasy 15, you know, obviously everyone has, you know, melee weapons and they can do ranged strikes, yeah. you know, uh, to attack. But are there any other ranged weapons that don't, you know, pull you in up close to melee range that you could use? Um, yeah, so um, every character has kind of weapons they can use. Um, Noctis can wield um, all the different classes of weapons, which there are seven total types. Okay. Um, and there are there are close combat weapons or there's long range weapons as well. So some of the long range weapons um, would include guns. Um, you can throw shuriken. You can throw kind of kunai. 
as well. Sure, and I, I forgot to give credit. That was from uh, Starship Pooper One. <laughs> on, That's a on great Twitter. name. You you just you weren't gonna give credit, and then you read the username, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I was like, well, I kind of adapted it. Like, I may as well uh, read it. Um, uh, you know, it seems like we because you this game Final Fantasy 15 has like so many related properties. Like you guys have done movies before. Um, you've done ambitious stuff like uh, like um, you know MMOs. But I mean, this seems like the most ambitious thing you guys have ever done. It like, really, uh, like like all yeah. together. Yeah, I've never really seen anything like this um, from a Final Fantasy title. So it's really cool to see. I mean, yeah, we've never had a full anime series going out at the same time. Never had a movie going out at the same time. Like something like Final Fantasy VII Advent Children mm -hmm. was kind of like after the game launched, yeah. and then. Um, like mobile games that are happening concurrently with, with the game. So it's, it's all really, really exciting. Yeah. And um, speaking of, um, Ella Roosevelt uh, 14 asks, when is the movie coming out? Have the you guys. Movie? Ah, yes. great question. We just announced it. There you go. So it'll be in select theaters, select theaters across the states uh, August 19th. That is awesome. So it's um, just over a month earlier than the game itself. A month and what is it? A month, month, month and change, something Enough like that. Enough time to, to build up the hype train. Yeah. Gotta get gotta get it going like full full blast. Yeah, and it was an amazing it's an amazing cast that you have uh, uh, voicing the stuff, uh, yeah. the, the parts in Kingsglaive. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm super excited. I can't wait uh, to see it. It was really into random funny side note. Uh, at the uncovered event, um, Lena Headey who plays Cersei Lannister, uh, Aaron Paul who of course plays Jesse Pinkman it's, they, it's a weird mix-up for us to see. I know, right? <laughs> they were they were all in front of me at the Uncovered event, ready to go on stage, and I'm standing there backstage with them. I'm like, what am I doing here? This is like the weirdest moment ever. That's when you just like, play it cool. <laughs> you're, you're, like, you're like, no, we do this all the time. It's good. Welcome. It's no big deal. But they're both awesome and super professional. But yeah, the voice casting is really exciting. Um, are you able to talk about like and, some of the world and some of the other kingdoms? Um, or will, will we be seeing any of that stuff? Uh, here, so mm, let me think. I think the initial demo that we we released last year was um, what's called Episode to Sky. So it's a major region um, within within the world. The world itself is called Eos, E O S, um, and then there's the Kingdom of Lucis. I'm just trying to think of what else we revealed. Uh, we sure, also I know revealed there's a lot. Accordo, which is um, which is kind of a a city or a country that's built upon the water. So it kind of looks like Venice, Italy. Okay. Um, and we've revealed that one as well. Um, as far as other ones, um, there's a lot more within the game. So, you know, the world does seem like it's, you know, it's really open. You yeah. know, you're kind of just driving around. Like, are, are there missions that you can undertake? Like, does every mission have to be taken sequentially? Or can you, like, weave your way around and find, like, side missions? Yeah, so there is a main quest, which is a beefy amount of gameplay. I've gone through a decent amount of it, but... Um, there's your main quest, but of course you can do tons of side quests, and you can make it a million plus hour game. Yeah, Final Fantasy games are known for you know having really lengthy quests. They're yeah. super involved. You know, how, are you willing <laughs> to share how long does it has it taken you to uh, to complete? I don't the think main quest? we've divulged how long okay, it, okay. It, it takes, but I was trying to be a little cheeky there. No, uh, it's a good question. No, you're being subtle. I liked it. <laughs> I liked it. You almost got it. Yeah. So close. But yeah, it's, I mean, it's easily the kind of game you can you can pour you know over a hundred hours into. Um, yeah. But I, I wish we had more time to talk about it. But I really want to thank you for, for joining us today. Oh, we're done? Yeah, we're done. we got to wrap. No. So the game is coming out September 30th. September 30th. Uh, so it's not that much further away. King's we, we, we Select Theaters, go play it. August Sorry. 19th. Yeah. Uh, so thanks so much for joining us, uh, Matt. We really appreciate your time. No, thanks for having me on. This is fun. Yeah, cool. cannot wait. And, All right, uh, let's do another segment soon. Yes, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Come, right. come visit us. We'll go on a road trip. It'll be great. Let's do it. <laughs>